Hello, this is Dr. Chopsy, and welcome back to another edition of Beginner's Biology, where I aim to bring you basic biology content, either as a study aid or for general interest in the subject. Before I get on with today's video, I'd just like to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you're new, and to leave a like if you find the video useful. Today's video is going to be a basic introduction to proteins. These are some of the most important components of the cell, and are responsible for the vast majority of cellular functions. You could regard them as the cell's workforce. These important molecules are responsible for all of the functions that keep us and other life forms alive. Some of these functions include transporting molecules, such as absorbing nutrients and water from our food sources. They also break them down to be used for energy sources, a process known as metabolism, with some excess molecules that we don't need immediately being stored by storage proteins. Proteins also provide a structural network to form and protect parts of the cell and allow us to move without relying on outside forces and also act as our first line of defense in dealing with infections as part of our immune system. They also maintain our cell's DNA, repairing damage that may have occurred to us as well as aiding the production of new proteins from RNA and the recycling of old or defective proteins into amino acids. Whilst this is a small snapshot of what proteins can do, I hope you can begin to see why they are so important for how our cells are able to live. So where do all of these important proteins come from? Well, they are made in our cells from molecules called amino acids, using our DNA as a blueprint and using many of the cell's organelles, which can be seen here. As mentioned, our DNA is used to give the instructions for how proteins are made, so the whole process starts in the nucleus, shown here in red. From here, the process travels outside of the nucleus to the ribosome, in orange, before being transferred to the endoplasmic reticulum, in grey, and finally to the Golgi apparatus, or Golgi body, in blue, before being released as a fully mature protein, ready to get to work. If you are unfamiliar with cells and the organelles within them, you can use the video linked here to find out more. Now let's take a closer look at the overall process of how these molecules are made. As I've already mentioned, proteins are produced or synthesized using the genetic code present in our DNA, which provides the instruction manual for how the proteins are manufactured from amino acids. First, a section of DNA containing a gene goes through transcription in the nucleus to produce a single-stranded RNA copy of the gene. This copy then leaves the nucleus and associates with a ribosome, which then moves to the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. Here, the RNA code is translated into a chain of amino acid molecules by the ribosome, which is released into the inner space of the endoplasmic reticulum. In prokaryotic organisms, such as bacteria, these processes occur in the nucleoid and cytoplasm respectively. To find out more about these processes, see the video linked here. In eukaryotic organisms, the amino acid chain is then folded into the correct shape in the endoplasmic reticulum and is then either released to the Golgi apparatus or in some cases joined with other proteins to form a larger functional protein before being released. The Golgi apparatus performs final checks for errors. If the protein seems to be okay, it is released to its final destination. Any misfolded or defective protein detected here is returned to the endoplasmic reticulum to be refolded or sent to a lysosome to be degraded and recycled back into individual amino acid molecules. In prokaryotic organisms, the folding and checking processes are all performed in the cell cytoplasm. As mentioned before, proteins have a wide range of uses in cells and are split into groups depending on their functions. The most commonly known group of proteins are called enzymes. These are the proteins responsible for breaking down and building up molecules that cells need to survive processes that are called metabolism and anabolism, respectively. Enzymes will often perform one kind of biochemical reaction, such as the example on the right. Here, the enzyme is taking two molecules, the red and blue triangles, and joining them together to form one molecule, represented by the purple diamond. Whilst each individual enzyme performs one action, this is not enough to form all of the molecules that the cell needs to make or break. To do this, Enzymes will often work with a group of other enzymes in what's known as a pathway to take a molecule that the cell can absorb and turn it into one that is required by the cell to function. The set of reactions that are carried out by enzymes in a pathway can be likened to an assembly line in a factory, where the first enzyme will carry out one reaction before passing the molecule to the next enzyme in the chain to allow it to carry out its reaction, and so on until the final product is created. In our example, the first reaction produces the purple diamond, which travels to the next enzyme and is then converted into an orange square to represent the second reaction. In this case, the second enzyme 
will only work on the purple diamond, and therefore has to wait until the first enzyme has made the purple diamond before being able to work. A detailed look into how some important pathways work, such as how we get energy from sugar, we covered in future videos. Other groups of proteins include transport proteins that transport molecules in and out of cells, or even to cells in distant parts of the organism. Examples of this can include sugar resorption from our diet into our cells for use as an energy source, or for the transport of oxygen from our lungs to our entire bodies by the haemoglobin proteins in our red blood cells. Structural proteins maintain the specific shapes that some cells need, whilst also being pulled by other proteins to cause the movement that our muscles are used for, with a basic example being shown in the bottom right corner of the screen. Proteins are also used to maintain cells and keep them working efficiently. They can be used to produce new proteins, as seen in transcription and translation, or even to protect and repair our DNA. Proteins also protect our bodies in other ways, as they form a big part of our immune response to invading organisms. Proteins such as antibodies, an example of which can be seen in the top right, are used to detect threats to our bodies and work with our white blood cells and other systems to remove them. Proteins can also act as a storage vessel to hold certain molecules until they are needed or because they can be harmful in large concentrations. Ferritin is an example of a protein that stores iron, which can be harmful if there's too much of it floating around in the cell cytoplasm. As with all machines, proteins have a limited lifespan. Older proteins begin to unfold and work less efficiently, and may even cause problems if left unmanaged. These proteins, as well as those that are not essential or constantly required, are taken to lysosomes, which are organelles responsible for unfolding proteins and recycling them back into individual amino acids for use in new proteins or other processes in the cell. This recycling process is carried out by a series of enzymes that reside inside of the lysosome organelle. And this concludes my introduction to proteins. Thank you for watching. As always, please leave a like if you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting, and please consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.